Good morning. Batiin mo nga ang iyong katabi. Sabihin mo, ako'y nagagalak na ikaw ay naririto. Dagdagan mo na rin na miss kita. <laughs> so good morning everybody. I hope that you had a very fruitful week and we are looking forward for a more fruitful week because we will be starting our week with worship. Amen? So, nung nakaraang linggo, tinapos ni Pastor Ryan yung ating series for the month of February, God, the Source of Love. At meron siyang sinabi sa atin, naratandaan niyo pa ba? Ano ba sinabi ni Pastor Ryan sa atin? Sabi niya, kasi di ba, God, the Source of Love. We tackled about love, we tackled who the source of love. At ang last message was, now we know. Ama? Now we know. Okay? It was a message taken out from uh, the 103rd Psalm. Ang Psalm na to is telling of God's compassion, grace, mercy, and His abounding love. Kung natatanda natin, God revealed and manifested and made His love felt. Ipinahayag ng Panginoon, ipinamalas ng Panginoon, at ipinadama ng Panginoon yung kanyang pag-ibig sa ating lahat. And you know what? I was imagining David while he was composing this song, this psalm. Kasi lahat ng binanggit ni David dito really came out from his heart. And he was very, very sure, and he was very empathic when he penned down these words in this Praises in this song of praise, yung Psalm 103. Now, para sa akin, ang centerpiece ng Psalm 103 ay makikita natin sa Psalms as uh, verses 8 to 12. Ito yung para sa akin, ito yung centerpiece nito. And I will read this to you in the New Living Translation. Okay, so verse 8 says, The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love, And He will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not, harsh, he does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For His unfailing love toward those who fear Him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He, oh wait. he has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. Wow. You see, He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. And as I was listening to the message last Sunday, hindi ko talaga mapigilan yung sarili ko na magpaint ng something to really measure or to think how far or how wide the distance between the east and the west. I, was, I closed my eyes and I made a parang mental computation or mental picture on how far the east is from the west. And then I realized that na, na, na pagtanto ko mga kapatid na the distance is infinite. Ibig sabihin, wala siyang katapusan. It is immeasurable. Hindi mo pwedeng masukat. And that is the love of God. So, with these words, let us make this as the jump off point sa ating bagong sermon series for the month of March. So, let's bear in mind yung Psalm 103 verses 8 to 12 and let us make this as a jump off point when we jump and when we begin a new series for this month of March that will end up on the first Sunday of uh, April. Okay, and then after that, we will be talking about the resurrection. And the title of our, the theme of our series, sermon series for this month is The Difficult Road to Calvary. So together, lahat tayo mga kapatid, and I hope that you will be present every Sunday thereafter, or you can, be, you can join us there, wag tayo mag-absent. Because this is very important for each one of us. This one, the difficult road to Calvary. So let us trace back the last week of the Lord's earthly ministry. Yung last week niya, this is the important, the most, one of the most important events in the lives, in the lives of the disciples and to the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. And should be sa bawat isa sa atin. 
And so let us bear in mind the words from Psalm 103, verses 8 to 12. Alam niyo mga kapatid, hindi tumigil ang ating Panginoon sa pagpapahayag, sa paglalahad, sa pagpapadama sa atin from showing us how He loved us. You see, ang ating Panginoon, the Father made a definite decision to give us His Son as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. What does that mean? This was His ultimate expression of His love to remove our sins as far from us as the East is from the West. This is his ultimate expression to show his love. Ang sabi kasi ni Paul in Romans chapter 3 verse 20 to 25, ang sabi niya, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God present, presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of His blood to be received by faith. Tanggapin lang na may pananampalataya. To believe that He died for us. That's the only requirement. No other requirement. Just to believe it, to receive it by faith. So, para magkaroon tayo ng proper context before tayo magumpisa sa ating uh, sermon series and even for the message for today, tingnan natin yung traditional na calendar of events for the Lord's last week of ministry. This is very important na itong basic na to malaman natin to mga kapatid. So that when we when we celebrate the the, the passion of the Christ, we know kung anong nangyari doon sa loob ng last week of the Lord's earthly ministry. So ito yung traditional na calendar of events. Sunday, Jesus come comes to Jerusalem and this is commonly known or popularly known as the Triumphal Entry or Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday will happen this year in April April 1-5, if I'm not mistaken, on the first Sunday of April. But we will be doing this now. So Sunday, Jesus comes to Jerusalem, Palm Sunday. And on the next Monday, second cleansing of the temple. Uh, pangalawang cleansing na to actually, mga kapatid. Kasi akala natin isang beses lang nag-cleanse ang Panginoon doon sa, sa templo. Dalawang beses ito yung pangalawa niya. Tuesday, na happen, it happened yung mga controversies between him and the Jewish leaders. Wednesday, uh, walang activity. Parang nag-rest sila doon. It was a rest day for the Lord. Thursday, they prepared for Passover. And then we know that Thursday he was arrested. Thursday night he was arrested after they have finished preparing for the Passover. And on the next day, Friday, trial and crucifixion. Ang bilis ng pangyayari. And then Saturday, he was at the tomb. And most Bible scholars says he was at the tomb, he was just resting there. He was not dead. Okay? Sunday, Jesus raised from the dead. So yung reference text na binasa ko kanina sa inyo, which is really from the 19th chapter ng Luke, according to Luke, the Gospel according to Luke, kung pagbabasihan natin to, what I have read before you started on a Saturday afternoon. Kasi nung the whole day ng Saturday, Jesus met a man named Zacchaeus. If you read at the first verse of this chapter, na meet ng Panginoong Hesus si Zacchaeus. Nakala mo si Zacchaeus? Yung patangkad, maliit. Maliit ba? Maliit. I don't si Zacchaeus sa likod. He was a chief tax collector, we all know that, okay? He was wealthy. And you know that the ang 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 reputation ng mga tax collectors during that time, and I don't know this time, but during that time was talagang they have a very bad reputation. And yet, he was searching for the deeper meaning of life. Alam natin yung story, hindi ko na ibabigay sa inyo lahat. It's another topic, it's another sermon. But the short story of this is that he found the Lord, uh, the Lord found him and his whole household was saved. Buong pamamahay ni Zacchaeus was saved. Zacchaeus was lost but now was found a changed man with a brand new life. Sa pagkakataong ito, the house of Zacchaeus was really full packed with people. Yung mga taong nandun, mga usiseros, mga marites, 
and others, they were there because the Lord was there. In fact, mayroon pa ngang mga bulung-bulungan. Bakit sa pupunta sa isang bahay ng isang makasalanan? It is not, it's not right. Mga ganon ganon. Pero you see, those people they missed out the main message of the Lord, salvation. They missed out the main message of the Lord there. Kasi ang ini-expect nila, they were there at the house of, 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 of Zacchaeus that they can see another miracle. Dahil oras lang, ng umaga ng Saturday na yun, the Lord, prior coming to the house of Zacchaeus, He healed two blind beggars. Pinagaling niya at yung, yung, yung dalawang bulag. So the people were amazed. So they were there, sunod-sunod sila para makakita uli sila. Akala nila makakita uli sila ng milagro. But they missed the main point there. It was really the salvation that the Lord Jesus Christ was telling them. So while they were there, habang nini-imagine ko na yung mga tao na doon sa, nandun sa bintana, nandun sa, yung basi ko nakaupo kung saan para makakita sila kung ano nang mangyayari uli, the Lord Jesus Christ took this an opportunity to say something. In verses 11 to 27, if I'm not mistaken, meron siyang sinun- merong kwento doon. It's a parable. It's a story. It's a story about the minas, the talents, or about the king. Ginawa ng Panginoong Isok Kristo to to prepare His disciples of what will happen next in the next coming days for the next week. It was a story about a nobleman who will become king. Pero that king will be rejected by the man that he trusted. So, nakita na ng Panginoong Isos itong lahat ko anong mangyayari, that he will go to Jerusalem as a king and he will be rejected by them. Dahil the week ahead will be the most difficult days of his life on earth. Hindi lang sa Panginoong Isos Kristo, kundi kasama ng kanyang mga disipulo, ng kanyang mga disciples. So after telling this story, Maggagabi na, the Lord noticed that, you know, it's already starting to, to get dark. So sabi ng, sinabi sa kanya mga disciples, let's get up. We're going to Jerusalem. Get up. We're going to Jerusalem. And this is the focus of our message for today. To kick off our new sermon series that will culminate on Resurrection Sunday in April. They're going to Jerusalem. Verses 28 to 44, mga kapatid, marks the first of the many, yung unang hakbang ng Panginoong Kristo for that difficult road towards Mount Calvary. Kasi alam nyo, before he got up, nung sinabihan niya yung kanya mga dis- disciples to get up because we're going to, 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 to Jerusalem, when he got up, na, naiimagine ko na he almost fell down because he felt the pains on his leg muscles. Kasi by the time na nandun na sila sa lugar ni Zacchaeus, which is the new city of Jericho, he already, they already have walked 130 miles, 130 kilometers from Capernaum. 130 kilometers of walking para makarating doon sa Jericho City at doon nakaupo sa bahay ni Zacchaeus. So when he stood up, di ba? Mapansin niyo yun? Na yung matagal ka nakaupo, lalo pagkapagod na yung mga paa mo, tapos bigla kang tatayo, you can feel pain. Especially this that you've been walking for 130 kilometers already. And then from there, they will walk a few more kilometers para makarating doon sa, sa town. It's called Bethphage, a suburb outside the walled city of Jerusalem. And perhaps they will stay overnight in Bethany. Bakit ko nasabi yun? Because ang Bethany is the hometown of his friends, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. This is the only house that is mentioned in the Bible that the Lord Jesus Christ went to that doon siya maninirahan. Because we all know that he was even rejected on his own hometown in Nazareth. Few kilometers more. You see, mga kapatid, just picture this one out. Burying Psalm 103, all the things that the Lord Jesus Christ went through, it was a great humiliation sa anak ng Diyos who has subjected himself pumunta rito sa mundo para tayo ay sagipin sa ating mga kasalanan. Habang nandirito siya sa mundo, he had no means of traveling except by walking. Walang horse, walang donkey, no nothing. And in verse 29, ito yung katakataka, ito yung something that is really very surprising. As he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill 
called the Mount of Olives, he sent to his disciples, tinawag niya yung dalawang disciples, unnamed disciples, and he told them, go, he sent ahead to let them prepare for the coming to Jerusalem. So actually, the Lord Jesus Christ was telling them, followers, it's time. It's time. His time and His hour has come. God is never too late, never too advanced, never ahead. He is always on the dot. He is always on time. Remember that first miracle at the wedding in Cana? When sabi ng kanyang ina na si Mary, he said, Keep the, the door. they ran out of wine already. The first miracle that he, that he did, ang sabi niya, my time has not yet come. Hindi pa to oras ko, but mo ko sinasabihan to do and give them wine. But in this instance, mga kapatid, it is the time for the Lord Jesus Christ now to do and obey the command of the Father. And what's that command? To suffer and die. So imagine the anguish that he had. Imagine yung kanyang nararamdamang sakit sa kanyang mga, mga paa o sa kanyang katawan. And then with that mind, with that mindset that he knows what will happen in that week in Jerusalem, it was not easy for him. Kasi alam niya kung anong mangyayari. Perhaps, naglalaro sa kanyang isipan yung mga salita ng Prophet Isaiah said that like a ship being led to the slaughter or a lamb that is silent before his shearers, he did not open his mouth. He is now being led to the slaughter. Like a ship. Walamang naiisip na ng Panginoong Isus yun. And ito yung naglalaro sa kanyang mga isipan. Well, wala sa Bible. Iniisip ko lang yun. But natural na mangyari talaga yun. Amen? Sino ba rito ang hindi mag-iisip ng something if you know where you're going? Halimbawa na you were already being judged to be in prison. Maglalaro na yan sa isipan mo. Anong magiging itsura mo doon sa loob ng kulungan? Tama? This time, I think he was already thinking all these things. So Luke chapter 19 verses 30 to 31 says, this is his instruction. Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there. 130 kilometers na nag, nag walk, plus siguro several 10 kilometers from Jericho to Bethpage and Bethany. He will ride a colt from there, just beside the wall, papasok ng Jerusalem. Why not walk, ride a horse or a donkey from Capernaum to Jericho? Why is it now? So sabi niya, find a colt, tie there, which no one has ever ridden. Kalagan ninyo, untie it and bring it here to me. And if anyone asks you, why are you tying it, untying it, say, the Lord needs it. Kinaumagan, kinaumagahan, kasi gabi na, di ba? The following morning, to sa Sunday, tatagpuan nga ng dalawang disipulo, ang asno or ang donkey. Ano ba sa Tagalog ang donkey? Hindi nyo alam, no? Donkey. You don't know it. Di ko rin alam. Anyway, just as the Lord told them. Yun pala, panagit ko na nga, o oh, asno, kayo talaga. Hindi lang yan, pati yung mga exact words that will be uttered, yung narinig nila yung, why are you untying the colt? This is the same words that the Lord Jesus Christ told them. At sinagot sila ng the same word din na sinagot ng Panginoong, sinabi sa, ng Panginoong Jesus sa kanila, that the Lord needs it. So, they brought the donkey to the Lord, Nilagay nila yung kanilang mga cloaks, yung kanilang mga body coverings. Nilagay nila doon sa donkey to the colt and they helped the Lord Jesus Christ ride on it. Now, there is a question in my mind. Why would the owners and even the, yung dalawang disciples did not ask the Lord, Bakit donkey? Bakit asno? Bakit hindi kabayo? Why would you request a donkey? Why not a horse? Di ba dapat ang hari? should be riding a horse to show his power. And then, alam natin na ito yung ini-expect ng bawat isa, ng bawat isa during their time, that the king, that the Messiah will become, will be coming over as a conquering king. Diba ito rin yung iniisip natin, that when we become Christians, our lives will be good. Our lives will be free of sickness. Our lives will be free of anything because we are the follower of the king. This is what they've been expecting. But you see, mga kapatid, think of symbols. Simbolo. 
Noong unang panganahon, in the ancient days, ang colt or ang donkey or asno, it is a noble animal. Gamit ito as a beast of burden, as a beast of service to carry the burdens of men. And pinaka-significant na gamit ng asno is that they are used by kings at yung kanyang mga emissaries, yung kanyang mga ministers ng king when they enter a city in peace. Paggamit nila asno, nakasakay sila sa asno, ang ibig sabihin nun, they will be entering a city in peace. And the cult symbolizes the Lord's peaceful intentions to come into Jerusalem. It differs dun sa isang hari na papasok na may sakay ng kabayo to conquer a city. Dito mga kapatid, mark this, the Lord was demonstrating dalawang bagay that He is telling the people and even His disciples that He is the promised King. He is the Savior of the people. Pangalawa, na hindi siya yung ini-expect nila to overthrow the Romans and free them from their tyranny. And sometimes when we read these words, these verses, we have to really think in our in mind now, when we follow the Lord Jesus Christ, it is not to remove everything that we feel here on earth. But it is for us to have something in our hearts and our mind because the cult is a symbol of peace. The Lord was coming as the Savior of peace. Ang cult is a symbol of service. Dumating ang Panginoon to serve men and to bear their burdens, to bear our burdens. Yun yung rason kung bakit siya nagpunta rito. East to the West, the cult is a symbol of sacredness. Kasi may qualification ang sinabi ng Panginoong Iso Kristo dito. Sabi niya, no one has ridden or used it yet. Ako ang unang gagamit. Remember that everything that we give to the Lord is sacred. Hindi mo pa nagagamit, you offer it to the Lord because when you use it, you can no longer offer it. That's the law of giving. That's the law of offering. You give something that is not yet used, kaya sacred, just like our tithes. We don't use it. We give it because it's sacred. And he was proclaiming, mga kapatid, that he is the sacred hope of mankind. A symbol of peace, a symbol of service, and a symbol of sacredness. Tinan niyo yung timing ng events dito. Jesus did not stop seeking the lost. At nakita niya si Zacchaeus. And then the parable, he alluded himself as a coming king that will be rejected. The call was there for the disciples to find nandun. And the owners were there to obey what was prophesied. Ano ba ang na-prophesy? Zechariah 9.9, Matthew 21.5 says, Say to daughter Zion, See, your king, is, see, king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus is coming into Jerusalem to die right on time. Ang sabi nga ni Dr. William Colbertson, ang pinakaunang presidente ng, ng Moody's Bible Institute, sabi niya, Calvary was not, was not an afterthought of God. It was His forethought. Hindi siya afterthought, kung hindi, dito palang nakikita na ng Panginoong Diyos. At ang lahat na mangyayari sa linggong ito, the events that will follow is the fulfillment, fulfillment of what Scriptures tell us. It is the fulfillment of the Scriptures. Nakita ng lahat ito ng Prophet Isaiah. He saw it all coming centuries before. Nakita niya that the people will welcome him with great joy. Nakita niya niyo mga tao ay magsisigawan with praise. And the atmosphere will be very festive. And people will spread their cloaks on the road. Sa time natin ngayon, ang tawag nito red carpet entry. Kaya... Diba, pagka mayroon mga film festival ngayon, mayroon pa yung festival na darating. Maraming mga controversial na nangyayari sa... I don't know what... I don't know if you do that. I don't read the news. I don't listen to the news anymore. But I still can hear it. Right? So, mayroon tayong tinatawag na red carpet entry. Nakita to ng Prophet Zechariah. Centuries before. 
So habang papalapit na sa sa Mount of Olives, the whole crowd, thousands of them, libo-libo, they began to joyfully sing praises to God with loud voices for all the miracles and amazing things they have seen. Diba kasi nakakapag-praise lang talaga ang tao pagka merong milagrong nangyari sa buhay or kung merong tayong tinatawag na quote-unquote blessings na nareceive, you can praise. Pag walang nareceive na ganun, we no longer praise. Kaya lang, masaya ako dahil walang ganyan dito sa ABCC. Amen? Sa ABCC, high or low, sickness or wala, joyful pa rin at nagpe-praise pa rin. Amen? The people had just recently seen miracle after miracle. Ang pinakalas nila nakita is yung is yung dalawang beggar, blind beggar, na pinagaling ng Panginoong Iso Kristo. Ang hindi nila talaga makalimutan, lalo nung makita nila na natulog ang Panginoon, nagpahinga ang Panginoong Iso Kristo sa bahay ni, ni Lazarus, is that when he rose Lazarus from the dead. Kaya when they saw it, when they saw him entering at the gate of Jerusalem, ang sagaw nila in Luke 19.38 says, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Ito yung sigaw nila doon. Kasi nakita nila ang Panginoon, papasok na. The whole atmosphere, electric, with excitement and expectation. And the people know that Jesus had the power to do anything. He could bring the kingdom of God to earth. Pero may nga silang misconception about His coming. In the middle of their ecstatic celebrations, na fail nila to notice that he was riding a colt, not a stallion. They failed to realize na ang Panginoon ay dumating to bring peace. And he came to bear their burden. He came to bear our burdens. They failed to see that he came in sacredness to save them spiritually. They failed to see that he was coming in meekness as symbolized by the donkey that he was riding. Alam nyo, hindi lang yung mga tao doon o yung mga nagsa-celebrate that missed the whole point of what was happening. Even yung mga leaders, they missed it out. Naingayan sila actually doon sa pagsisigaw ng mga tao ng praises that blessed is the king who comes. Kasi ilang beses nila tong inulit. And this is, this is a quote of a prophecy that happened many, many years ago. Naingayan sila, pero actually they were jealous of the attention given by the people to the Lord. Verse 39 to 40 says, Some of the Pharisees in the crowd, sabi nila, said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Ang sagot sa kanila, I tell you, he replied, If they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. What does that mean? What does that mean? Mga kapatid, it means a lot for all of us. The Lord was emphasizing to them what was written about Him. He was declaring His kingship. He was declaring His deity. He's declaring that He is God. Why? Because He was declaring that He is King over creation. Na kung yung mga tao, tayo ay titigil sa pagsisigaw at pagpe-pray sa Kanya, the stones will praise Him. So that when we fail to sing in our praise and worship here, and we keep quiet, even if they sing songs here, those chairs will sing and cry out for praises. Dahil ang sabi ng Panginoon sa kanila, He was telling them, I am God. The stones will cry out if the people will keep quiet. Naganap ba ito mga kapatid? Yes. While He was hanging on the cross, creation cried out. What was there? When he was crying on the cross, when he was huhugutin niya na yung kanyang last tahininga, there was an eclipse. There was darkness all over for three hours. The sun hid his face. Even the sun was sad that the grandson of God is dying for all of us. Creation will cry out if we will stop praising God. The next the thing that happened when he, he, he died at that hanging on the cross, nagkaroon ng what? What happened? There was an earthquake. 
the earth shook and trembled because he is king of creation. He is your king. He is my king. Whatever you have right now, he can get it and take it away. Amen? But most of all, he can give you peace. Yun yung kailangan natin, peace that is insurmountable, peace that cannot be taken away by anything. This is the meaning of this first Sunday, the Palm Sunday that happened. He was telling the people, I am king, I am God, I am king over our creations. Kahit patumigil kayo sa pagpipraise and worship, the stones will cry out for me because I am their king and I created them. The sun heat and the earth shook and trembled. You see, mga kapatid, everything that was written about the Lord Jesus Christ is being fulfilled. Galing sa kanyang virgin birth in Bethlehem to being rejected and despised. And you see, and to become an atoning sacrifice, He is the ultimate perfect sacrifice. Everything that was written about Him Naglalaro sa kanyang isipan that day. Because this is the only time, kung makikita nyo mga kapatid, this is the only event that the Lord Jesus Christ allowed a public display about Him. Nowhere in the scriptures that the Lord, that the Lord allowed na merong ganitong celebration. It is the only, the first and the last time that He allowed people to, when He was here on earth. He saw the people... Nakita niya lahat. He knows that this, the same people who sang Hosanna, Hosanna, or praise to the King, will be the same people will shout, crucify Him on Friday. The same people na nagsabi sa kanya, nagrit sa kanya, here is our King. The same people na pagdating ng Friday, ipako sa sa cross, ipako sa sa cross. As this celebration went on, mga kapatid, Alam niya na yung mga Jewish authorities will soon act to arrest him. Huhulihin siya. But while the crowd was rejoicing and while the crowd was celebrating, he was riding on the colt. While he was looking at the people and look at Jerusalem, Jesus was weeping. Umiiyak ang ating Panginoon. This was the only second time that he went, that he wept publicly. Yung una noon, nung umiyak siya, nakita ng mga tao when Lazarus died. But he did not cry because Lazarus died. He cried because of the situation of the people on their hearts. The same thing here dito, mga kapatid, that he cried and he wept over Jerusalem. Itong binanggit ni Dr. Luke when he wrote, Habang papalapit sa Jerusalem, and when he saw the city, nakita niya yung city, he wept over it. And he said, If you, even you, had only known on this day, what would bring you peace? Tinan niyo, ha? Kung alam nyo lang sana, kung alam nyo lang sana, kung ano ang makapagbibigay sa inyo ng kapayapaan. Kung alam nyo lang sana kung ano makapagbibigay sa inyo ng kapayapaan sa ngayon. Magbibigay sa inyo ng kapayapaan. Kapayapaan hindi maialis ng kahit sino man. Pero dahil sa katigasan ng inyong mga puso, ito'y nakatago na sa inyong mga paningin. But now it is hidden from your eyes. And the days will come, he continued, upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you and in every side. And they will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Hindi daw nila na-recognize ang pagbisita ng Diyos sa kanila. Kahit saan sa tumingin, mga kapatid, wherever he looked, nakakita siya ng rason to cry or to weep. Hindi pala cry, kasi yung weep is paghagulgul, tama no? Hagulhul. Weeping, it is not an ordinary crying. Kasi if he look back, kung titignan niya, he look back, nakita niya kung how the people wasted their opportunities and how the people have been ignorant of the presence of God in their midst. Nabang ito lang ating Pastor, nung nakaraang Sunday, makikita natin ang presensya ng Panginoon sa palibot natin. Do you believe that? And then they rejected Him. God visited them and they missed that one out big time. 
Hindi nila pinansin ang pagdalaw ng Diyos sa kanila. And then, he looked back, and then he looked within as he was looking at Jerusalem. He looked within each people. Bawat isa sa kanila doon, he saw spiritual ignorance and blindness in the hearts of the people. Alam niyo kung bakit niya nabanggit, bakit ko nabanggit ito? Because dapat alam na ng mga anak ng Diyos yun. Dahil binigyan na sila ng salita, binigyan na sa kanila ng word. Nandun na sa kanila yung unang Bible, the Torah, it was already given to them. And meron ng mga messenger na dumating sa kanila. One, the last messenger was John the Baptist. To prepare the way. Pero wala pa rin nangyari. Habang siya ay humahagulhul, he look around at nakita niya ang religious activities that accompanies mga religious activities na nangyayari. And he know that in his heart, those religious activities will accomplish little to nothing. Yeah, minsan we really have to look at the activities that we want to do. Kasi the temple had become a den of thieves and the religious leaders were out to kill him. And then nakita pa niya because ng time na yun, it was a celebration for the one week celebration of the Passover and the Feast of Tabernacles. Kaya maraming tao na nandun, there were so many pilgrims that will celebrate the festival. Pero yung mga tao na nandun na mag-religious activity pupunta doon to celebrate, the hearts of the people were heavy with sin and life's burdens. Just like what we, when we celebrate the Holy Week, ang holy-holy natin. Pero our lives are really full of life's sin and burdens. And then he looked forward, he looked ahead. Nakita niya kung anong mangyayari. He wept as he saw the terrible judgment that was coming. He looked back, he went, looked within, he looked around, and he looked at the future. Kaya umiiyak ang Panginoong Jesus. Kaya siya humahagulhul. There was the terrible judgment that were coming. Well, for their time, history will tell us that in the year 70, Ang mga Romano would come and gumawa sila ng seeds for 143 days. Doon sa Jerusalem, they killed 600,000 Jews. They took thousands of them captive and then they destroyed the temple of the city. They destroyed the temple and the city. Ito yung, kaya ngayon pagka umuwi yung mga, mga Jews sa Israel, they are just left with that wailing wall. The remaining ruins of the temple wall na lang kaya they wail over there because the temple is no longer there why did all this happen mga kapatid? bakit ito nangyari mga kapatid? because the people did not know that God had visited them you see the road to Calvary was really really hard for the Lord Jesus Christ kaya gusto kong ilagay nyo sa inyong mga isipan, sa inyong mga puso, yung sinabi ni David in Psalm 103 verses 8 to 12 on how far and wide the love of God for all of us is. He knows that soon he will be alone, rejected and despised. But no matter what will happen, no matter what will happen, he will not stop revealing, he will not stop showing, he will not stop making his love felt to all of us. Amen? Romans 5.8 says, But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So mga kapatid, bearing the picture of that road to Calvary when the Lord Jesus Christ was entering the city of Jerusalem, Think about His love. Think about what He's been doing. And look at yourself right now. And look back. Have we missed opportunities? And see that God has visited our lives. Those opportunities where people approach you for something that will change your life. Look within. Look within. Do we still have that spiritual dryness or spiritual hunger that we have? And look around kung anong nangyayari sa atin ngayon. 
Does it bring us goodwill? Does it bring us something that will have eternal value? And then look ahead. What is the future that you are looking at? In line with the faith that you have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us all stand up. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. Lord, here we are this morning. We have heard from you. Words that are really serious for all of us, Lord, to be serious up upon. But we have to rejoice because even if the road to Calvary was so hard for you, you still did it for us. And this is the reason why we celebrate every Sunday to gather together as a big church, to gather your scattered church, and to strengthen each one with the experiences that we have for the whole day, for the whole week. And to share to each one what happened to our lives? Yes. To share our burdens. But for this whole week, you were there to carry us. At kahit mga ano nangyari, kami ay nanlulupaypay. But we feel your presence was there, so that we are here to to strengthen each one also. Yes, even in the midst of suffering, in the midst of sickness, even in the threat of death, we will not stop praising. And we will always remember the last week of your earthly ministry and how hard was it for you. And to remember, Lord, what have you done for us? and compare what is with us right now. Teach us, Lord, to look back. Teach us, Lord, to look within. Teach us, Lord, to look around. And teach us, Lord, to look ahead. Yes, even if we keep silent, the stones will cry out.